King Charles III celebrated his official birthday by partaking in the, in the Trooping the Color Parade. This event, which upholds a nearly 300-year-old tradition, encompasses the essence of royal greatness through its significant attires, new royal titles, and renaissance of customs. The ceremony occurred in close proximity to the Buckingham Palace, where a majestic procession was performed by approximately 1,400 foot guards and the household cavalry. They marched along the Mall of Two Horse Guards Parade, Whitehall and back. Accompanying them were more than 400 musicians, creating a harmonious spectacle. Leading the impressive assembly of soldiers was His Highness the King, Charles III, donning the distinguished uniform of the Welsh Guards, known as the, the Tunis of the Order's Guard of Honour, the traditional bearskin hat and blue garter sash further enhanced his attire. Notably, King Charles paid a heartfelt tribute to his mother, Queen Elizabeth II, by featuring her cipher in his uniform. The king has acquired considerable experience in equestrian processions, having made his debut in the Trooping the Colors Parade back in 1975. Almost five decades have passed. The British people take great pride in their king's unwavering skills over time. However, this year holds a special significance as the focus of the event shifts entirely to Charles. While Trooping the Colors traditionally celebrates the official birthday of the British sovereign, dedicated royal enthusiasts are aware that Charles' actual birthday falls on November 14th. Nonetheless, the monarchy has long observed the tradition of celebrating the sovereign birthday in June, allowing for a grand festivity under the sunny skies of summer. Trooping the color also serves as an occasion to demonstrate support for the monarch, who serves as the technical head of the British Armed Forces. Thus, the military aspect of the event receives considerable attention. The King Charles honored this tradition, while also injecting new vitality into a ritual that had remained dormant for nearly three decades, he participated in the parade on horseback, emulating the actions of previous female queens, including Queen Elizabeth II, who took part in the parade herself. However, as the late 1980s approached, Queen Elizabeth II's age necessitated a change in her participation. Alongside the king, several senior members of the royal family took part in the parade. Prince William, for the first time, stepped into the spotlight as the ceremonial head of Welsh Guards. Princess Anne, a steadfast pillar of royal tradition, joined the, joined the procession as the senior colonel of the household division. Nevertheless, this year brought a fresh royal presence to the parade. Prince Edward, the youngest of Charles's siblings, rode on horseback alongside the king for the very first time. Interestingly, Princess Catherine was also expected to be part of the military contingent this year. She assumed the role of Colonel of the Irish Guards from her husband, Prince William, and dutifully fulfilled her colonel responsibilities on par with the others in her position. Traditional protocol would typically require her to don a complete military uniform and participate in the parade on horseback. However, acknowledging the passage of time and aging gracefully, Catherine joined Queen Camilla on an elegant carriage ride. The attire of the royal woman truly captivated the public's attention. They gracefully showcased their new roles within the monarchy. Queen Camilla's red silk coat dress drew inspiration from the uniform of the Grandier Guards, the raiment she now heads in British Army. The ensemble featured gold bullion embroidery on the collar and back slashes. Her Majesty adored a hat of the bear skin with a feather plume resembling an exploding grenade, paying homage to military symbolism. The Princess of Wales subtly acknowledged her position as Colonel of the Irish Guards. Her dress mirrored the color of Guards' uniform and incorporated a military-inspired design at the top. Symbolically, she adorned her outfit with a shamrock brooch, representing Ireland's prominent emblem and also serving as a symbol of the Irish Guards. The procession also included the Prince and Princess Wales' three children, Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis.
There was anticipation surrounding Prince George's involvement as he had a special role in Charles's coronation as one of the pages of honor, leading to assumptions that he might have a significant role in this event as well. However, George joined his younger siblings for a carriage ride and was not present during the main part of the event in front of Buckingham Palace. As always, Princess Charlotte charmed the public with her attire, a vintage-style dress with an elegant collar and bow. The chosen colors of her dress, red and white, undeniably paid homage to traditional British shades. Prince George and Prince Louis donned the ties in matching patriotic red tones, complemented by jackets adorned with gold buttons. The procession concluded their segment and the King's troop organized 41 gun salutes in Green Park. Prince Louis appeared more mature than ever in his official attire. The way he interacted with the crowd impressed royal fans, especially after his playful antics during the coronation. At the time, he amused everyone with experimental waves and facial faces. It appears that the young prince is, has now mastered the royal protocol of grace. He shared a carriage ride with Prince Andrew and the Duchess of Edinburgh, Sophie. As they expected, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle did not attend the event, as they have stepped back from the royal duties since 2020. They rarely made appearances at, at official gatherings. Other royals like Princess Eugenie and Princess Beatrice were not invited to this year's Trooping the Colour. Nevertheless, the event cannot be labelled as lackluster. Approximately 8,000 people came to the palace to celebrate King Charles on his official birthday and witness the parade. The opportunity to attend came at a, at a price ranging from 5 to 30 pounds. The customary formal proceedings of Trooping the Colour included a grand salute to the king. Reverberating across the city in a spectacular display of honour and tradition, the event culminated with the appearance of the royal family on the Buckingham Palace balcony. King and Queen of Wales and their children and other members of the family gathered to greet the crowd. Princess Anne, accompanied by her husband, Vice Admiral Sir Timothy Lawrence and Prince Edward and Sophie, the Duchess of Edinburgh, were also present. However, some royal enthusiasts couldn't help but notice the absence of the late Queen Elizabeth II, King Charles III's beloved and popular mother. Nonetheless, little Prince Louis never fails to uplift the spirits to those around him. He even delighted his fans by offering a respectful salute. Then came the grand finale. The Royal Air Force flew past. A breathtaking spectacle featuring approximately 70 aircrafts from the Royal Navy, British Army and Royal Air Force, painting the sky with shades of red, blue and white. This remarkable display echoed the number of aircraft that participated in King Charles's, serving as a fitting conclusion to the day of festivities and time-honoring traditions. According to reports, after the official part of the celebration, the royal family gathered for a lunch. However, their whereabouts beyond that remained a matter of privacy. Share with us in the comments section your favorite moment from the Trooping the Color 2023.